I'm sure there'll still be some fantastic information there. Um, on August 4th, we do have At Home with Diversity. Uh, that is on August 4th from 9 to 5 p.m. This is free to uh, members to attend. Uh, the At Home with Diversity certification course covers how to work effectively with diverse populations so you can build businesses, business success in today's multi multicultural real estate market. And then our next Friday Fuse, uh, which will be August 7th, um, I am a Rottweiler. Uh, that's an interesting uh, uh, tag there that features uh, Reggie Ridger Rivers. I know you all probably know him. He's a former Denver Bron Bronco. In a recent Denver Post column, Reggie Rivers used an analogy about Rottweilers and Labrador retrievers that help people instantly see and understand the omnipresent nature of a systematic racism and the persistent effect on the subject of that bias. Reggie will share his perspectives on systematic racism, black people's centuries long fear of the police. Now each of us can stop contributing to the asymptomatic spread of racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, and other isms. So, um, you know, mark your calendar for that as we start the and kick off the month of August. So, so um, I'm gonna bring on our Zoom sponsor. Um, that is a web media group, South Metro Denver Visitors and Relocation Guide, and the Denver Relocation Guide. So welcome. Hi there, everyone. My name is Candy Thomas. I'm the publisher for both the Denver Relocation Guide and the South Metro Denver Visitors and Relocation Guide. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are aware or familiar with the South Metro Denver Visitors Guide. Um, it is done in partnership with the South Metro Denver Chamber and it serves as a informational piece for the South Metro area. And we're going on our third year for that particular um, publication. And as members of, of the South Metro Realtors Association, um, you guys are all entitled to discounted programming that includes print, digital advertising on denverrelocationguide.com and um, some lead generation. Adriana has a handout that she will be emailing each of you after the um, meeting. And if you have any questions, my contact information is on there. I was really looking forward to having donuts with you guys um, a few months back, but sometime soon, I promise. Do you guys have any questions for me? No? Is that good? Or is everyone muted? I think if, if anybody was like me, I was just muted. So, but, oh, okay. um, you know, Candy, thank you very much. Uh, you sure any, nobody has any questions? That the packet that Adriana is going to email you guys um, is very informative. Um, there's links to view our previous two issues for the guide. And if you guys have any questions, um, it's a great resource to give new clients, or if you're working with new clients that are moving to the area for the first time, um, you know, it's a great resource to, to get them, um, to have them get to know the area. And if you ever need any additional copies, um, you can either get them through the South Metro Realtors Association or feel free to give me a call or email me and I'm happy to deliver a box or two to you guys for free. I do have a question. Is this available digitally that we could email an ad? Yes. yes. Um, within the um, proposal or within the media kit that you guys are going to receive, there are links to view the 2018 issue and the 2019 issue. The 2019 issue is the most recent one. We are currently working on the, two, um, the 2020 issue. Um, and pricing and opportunities are, are included in that package. So if you have any questions, um, let me know. You can access the digital copy through that media kit, or if you have any problems, like I said, my contact information is going to be in the back of that, that guide, and you can feel free to give me a call or email me, and I'm happy to send you the link. Great, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. All right, anybody else got any questions for Candy before we move on? Okay. Well, Candy, we look forward to seeing you sometime in the future Absolutely. and actually bringing some real donuts and uh, I would uh, love to. Yes. 
Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hang out for a little bit, but I have a a strategy call that I have to hop on through my company. Um, so I'm not going to be here through the whole thing, but like I said, I look forward to hearing from each and every one of you if you have any questions. And thank you so much for having me. All right. Well, and thank you, Candy. And enjoy your other call. I've uh -huh. mastered, I think, the the ability to do double zooms because sometimes I'll do one over here and one over here. So. Oh but, yeah. Uh, so. I don't. I don't know. On a Friday morning, I don't know if I'm quite that agile. So. <laughs> We'll play it All safe. Right. Cool. All right. Um, we're going to move forward. Uh, today is uh, our statistics committee. And uh, I'm going to just make you guys guess uh, and wonder what they're going to talk about. But I think we all know what that is. Um, so welcome our, our stats committee. And they're going to share with us uh, really what's kind of transpired over the summer market uh, to this point and adjustments to COVID-19. So. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Yeah. I have Pete here, the chair of our statistics committee. Who knows nothing. <laughs> and we have Lynn as well. Um, she's also on our committee. So these two, I'm just going to, you know, sit here and then soak it all in. But these two are going to talk about what we've seen, not only this last month, but just kind of as a whole, like how is the pandemic really affecting us? Um, statistics wise. There you go. All right. Lynn, you guys were in the meeting. Mm -hmm. I didn't make that meeting, so I'm working off charts. Mm -hmm. Well, so, I, yeah. I would say, why don't you go off your charts and tell us what you see, and then I'll just summarize. You know, the video that you shot for us just came through this morning on YouTube, and I watched it, and I thought, why don't we just show that? Because that kind of sums it up from uh, this go. last I month. But, I'd like to hear Pete's take on the stats and then I'll review what we discussed at our last meeting. How does that sound? Yeah, you can just call me all knowing. <laughs> I would yeah. just say, Pete, you're all knowing. Hit it. Yeah, there you go. Um, the first thing that hit me was the number of new listings that we've had this year are down so much. Uh, that was just a shock. Uh, I thought we'd caught up, but after two months of laying off, we obviously did not. Uh, Pending's down a little bit, not as much as I expected though. And comparing those two numbers, I think Lonnie Glessner would go nuts with it, uh, saying that, gee willikers, we, we uh, were only down a thousand pendings year to date. Um, and yet we're down close to 3000 new listings. So that's where your absorption rate falls below a full month on the market and we are what 0.94 months on the market is that right mm -hmm. um and then the the final thing i got to were the closed listings and this is the one that i keep hearing about from the loan officers and that's why they're part of the uh statistics committee is that we're, we've got a larger fallout rate than we've had um, some people have been telling me 25%. And if I'm looking at this, we went from uh, uh, 26,000 down to 23,000 closings year to date. You'd expect that for the market, but at the same time, how does that compare with the pending uh, closed? And yeah, pendings, you, you just have to watch those things. So, um, for you guys, for those that are members of RE Colorado, you can access a lot of this information mm -hmm. on uh, InfoSparks mm -hmm. and the RE Colorado stats. Um, I also found that I really like a button on there that's, I, I've modified my uh, hot sheet in the morning to my county, my areas and my counties. So you can do that too. Okay, so that's, all my brilliance for the day. And I'll kind of piggyback off of Pete really quick. On our website, on right. we have um, underneath the resource tabs, housing statistics. We have a few of those InfoSpark graphs on that yep. page where you can, we can pair different cities. And I think actually I'm on it right now. I can show you all really quick. Um, so here's our video that we just did, and we can watch that in a minute here if you all would like. But here are those graphs we're talking about. You can kind of compare 
this we this we just have some median close prices that we're comparing um but we also have days on market kind of in over on the the right here and you can see how kind of crazy it's really been especially for the different markets so um i know i had a lot of fun pulling these graphs together because it was really interesting to see and it was so so easy so make sure you guys utilize re colorado and this link right here will bring you right to it and it'll walk you through step by step how to pull these graphs and you can you know really narrow it down to yep. your micro market and you know you can put together specific graphs for your clients it's really fun. I know you can get the zip code, and I think I heard the other day that you can actually do a map search. Yeah. Um, so that you could do a farm area that has weird geographics. There's polygrams. Is that right? Yeah, you can draw, draw a little yeah. space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, part of the reason we were talking about this is that, and, and this was a fight I had with MetroList when they were losing the. Uh, SSE, SSC, because those were South Suburban Central, South Suburban East. Those made sense to me. They were geographic areas that we serviced, and we could talk about a specific geographic area. Now we have to create our own map. The cool thing is you can save these and do them month after month mm -hmm. after month mm -hmm. and update them. And that's, that's why they're beneficial to you um, to go ahead and do that. So anyway. Mm -hmm. Looks like Lonnie just dropped a message in the chat. Oh, yeah. That's probably his. Mm -hmm. Biggest thing I saw in June is new listings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lonnie, if you want to pipe in, feel free to unmute yourself. Can I ask a quick question? With those 2,000 new listings, uh, obviously they're, they're resale homes, not new builds, correct? Yep. When your clients are listing their homes, are they upgrading to a new home? Are they moving out of market? Or, I mean, what is, what's the story there? I mean, are they just taking advantage of, of, the, buy, of the seller's market? You know, I, I love the question because it's a general question and we're supposed to understand generalities <laughs> of a market. But I remember a quote, all generalities are false. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, so you just can't come up with a general statement uh, and it's going to depend on your niche as a realtor uh, Lynn has a different niche than I do um, everyone does a different thing in a different way uh, my marketing is aimed at certain people who I've worked with over the years and uh, yeah some of those are moving out of town Okay. So relocating across town, that's the biggest single one, I think. Um, you know, they have outgrown or overgrown their house, um, and they need something bigger or smaller. Um, but that's a demographic thing. That, that's, um, you know, often you'll find young families who need to make a move because they only have two bedrooms and they need four and things are just getting shoehorned tight and you just never know where you're going to find them so there's there's no good answer to your question except in general yes you're right <laughs> all the above <laughs> well i believe what we're going to see is um you know while we've been able to kind of forecast things based off of historical data you know we're in a time where we're going to start seeing people exodus the cities going to the you know more rural sometimes you know um you know we see you know i know i'm on a lot of zoom calls and i see the background of some places where people are working you know not everybody had a you know private workspace in their home to be able to work from home and right. while you know we hopefully move forward and we're in a situation where you know, we can get back to work in some capacity, going to the office, those types of things. I think we're going to find a blend where people are going to like, you know, that like actually staying home and are going to want that private space, you know. So, you know, turning an extra bedroom, something that would have been sufficient for a, for a family uh, and a three bedroom, now really needs to be maybe a four bedroom. So they have a workspace and they can, you know, utilize their home in a different manner. So um, I think we just need to all be open to, you know, um, you know, helping our clients, being a little bit more inquisitive, you know, um, 
thank you for that fantastic graph. Um, that's for sure. You know, I know I like showing those to my clients. I think it's relevant information. And, you know, the more powerful you are as far as being knowledgeable to your clients, you know, I think the better opportunity you're going to have to win the, win the listing and, and uh, you know, enhance your business. So all these stats are fantastic. So. And Lynn, what, what did the uh, committee visit about? What were your key points? Well, let's have, uh, Kayla, can we watch the video, the YouTube video? Yeah, let's do it. No, not my picture. Let me turn my volume down here. Let me know if the volume is good or bad, and I'll just. Can you hear it? Oh, is this Fire? not the right one? I think this is the wrong one. Kayla, the other one is on the YouTube channel. That should be the first load of, of the actual committee talking. Okay. Yeah, that would be. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Come on. Pause. Okay. I have your Refresh that page. Sorry, you guys. Is this just going to be? <laughs> Go to home. It should be the first one. Okay. Oh, here we go. There's Matt's face. Oh, Matt did That's this? That's why we jump in there. Okay. Maggie? And then it continues to decline. So that's a good sign that um, demand and supply are equal here, um, or even declining. Even sliding. Matt, do you have a comment? Uh, if you know any sellers, anybody looking to sell, tell them that this is a pretty good time to be putting your house on the market. Randy? My, my thought is, can it go to three from four? Is that a challenge? Uh, not with any of my money, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think we also discussed the fact that um, Prices are holding steady because of supply and demand, because of the amount of inventory that's getting sucked up into pendings. It's, we're even seeing a slight uptake in prices, just a little, about 2% on detached homes. Anybody else want to comment on that? I would say that interest rates are probably playing a pretty big role in keeping those prices up as people just realize, you know, maybe the economy is not as great as it used to be, but with these low interest rates, they can still make the monthly payment work. And so they're still willing to pay um, a decent price, even up, over and above uh, home prices of last year. And I'm just, Lonnie Glessner last month was saying that for every quarter point reduced in interest rate, that's an 11% increase in buying power. So actually a 1% rate drop is equal to 11% price drop. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Oops. How rude Pete's, not, Pete's not good with numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Never <laughs> have. All right. I'm going to keep playing our video. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. The other thing we talked about is that real estate, once again, is going to pull this economy out of the mud, so to speak. And it's a different situation. We're not in a recession because of bad loans or how it was back in 07, 08, 09 during that period of time. And we're going to continue to to put, I think it, I think the last figure I heard was every time a home gets sold, it's about $73,000 out into the economy in ancillary fees, whether it's title or painting or decorating or any of those things. And interest rates are really good, as Matt said right now, which is keeping people buying. Yeah, and the inflation rate is high, too. Good. We're seeing new listings come on the market, and they quickly go into a pending status and then to close soon after. Um, again, that's keeping that supply and demand in balance, lowering our weeks of inventory, keeping prices remaining high. So it all ties together. So all you realtors out there and affiliates, if you know anybody that's been thinking even remotely about putting their house on the market, please, please, please talk to them because it's a great time to sell. Mm -hmm. I think we'll leave it with that. There you go. Any other comments about what you just saw? 
unmute yourselves if you have them. Mm -hmm. Mine isn't so much a, a comment, but a question. I know that um, public perception a lot of times can affect people's opinions and, and for, you know, just like the whole Zillow thing. So I was reading about Cor, what CoreLogic put out, and they were saying that out of, um, I guess, the top 10 cities that are going to decline by 10% by May of 2021, that Denver was number three in line because they said that we were overvalued and that the unemployment, and even though these things aren't true, when the public starts reading this, what impact do you think this has on, on you know, people in Denver thinking, well, what, what's going to happen if I try to sell my home and buy another one? Is it going to go down 10% by next year? And these conversations will normally start with, how's the market? The, the, uh, the prospective client will ask you that. And, uh, well, of course they get tired of hearing, Hey, it's great. Uh, but the follow on is probably, why do you ask? Um, and so as you're sitting there, why do you asking, um, you need to be going back into those info sparks because mm -hmm. two years ago, we we're talking about all real estate is local. And it really depends on your neighborhood, where you're asking about. If it's a, uh, uh, a real dynamic neighborhood, Highlands Ranch in Douglas County is still burning it up. Uh, and, but there are other parts of Castle Rock that are just not quite as hot. But I think days on the market um, down there is down at 12. Um, and you know the rest of the marketplace is what, eight? Uh, so, hey, that's not bad. Uh, it's all got to be aimed in at those why do you asks. So, we got a couple of chats here. Okay, a couple chats. This is the next one. Okay. Lonnie, could be a great opportunity for homeowners to lower single family residence mm -hmm. homes to move up as prices soar on their home values. Mm. Yeah. Pete, <laughs> love the phrase. Shoehorn tight. <laughs> hey, Pete. Yes, what sir. I was thinking of is if new listings of detached homes keep dropping while attached home listings keep rising, we're going to have some severe bidding wars on lower priced detached homes. Mm -hmm. And so homeowners of homes under 450 or 500,000 may be able to get a lot more for their home in the coming months than they ever thought. So it could be an incredible opportunity for them to move up. Oh yeah, and, and uh, interestingly, the, the question earlier from, is it Sandy or Candy or? Mm -hmm. Candy. Sorry, Candy, uh, about relocating. Um, I have clients who are selling a house in Littleton and they're buying a brand new build up in Berthet. And mm -hmm. it's, it's just, Okay, it's smaller, it's that great room uh, floor plan, if you will, the, the one that you if, you, if you've done SRES, Senior Real Estate Specialist uh, training, you know they describe a house for you. But yeah, there is some of that going on. And- uh, well, they downsize but upgrade. Yes, yep. yeah, yes. it's okay. a downsize but upgrade, yeah. And I'm not sure if you call the 65 miles to Bertha a relocation, but it fits there. Bertha, that's, that's a different, sort of different it, world. It, it fits the rules of the IRS. It fits a relocation yeah. for job because lo and behold, he bought a place, an office in Evans just before this. Mm. And so he's relocating his whole company. Oh, can right. I make a comment? Sure. Um, I have an advisee in our office. We have advisors, advisees that help newer agents through their first three transactions. And this gal has probably written seven contracts for this buyer. She sends me a text yesterday. She said, I'm sending over another offer for you to review. Uh, we can't get there fast enough. Before we can show the property, it's already gone under contract. And this is in the high fours and just under 500,000. And so 
all offers for this particular property are to be in by tonight at seven and they'll review them tomorrow at seven. So we're already seeing that, who is yep. Lonnie, that you're talking about, you know, that price point, just multiple offers, multiple offers, because there's just nothing available. Yeah, yeah. I, would pick, I would piggyback on what Lynn was saying. Um, you know, I had, you know, several brokers in my office and they were surprised at the price point. They're like, I didn't think that was supposed to be happening in this price point where we were getting multiple offers or, you know, 20 or $30,000 over asking price. So, um, you know, so, you know, things are changing just obviously due to inventory to some extent, but um, education so that your brokers can be, you know, aware of those types of things uh, is obviously critical for their success, I believe. So. Can I ask a quick question? So obviously the audience that I reach out to are people that are looking to move into the area. But, you know, new homeowners, I'm looking to come in to buy a home. With a market this tight, how would you, if somebody said, okay, I'm, I'm coming into the market, I'm moving in the market for a job, or we're just moving to Colorado and we'd like to live in Highlands Ranch, we want a four bedroom, three bath house, with the market as tight as it is and as sales is selling as quickly as they're getting listed, how would you best work with them and what kind of advice can I give them as they, they look to move to, to Colorado? Uh, I love because the that's question. what they come to my website for. They come to my website to, to look at, you know, what they need to know about buying a home in Colorado. And if the, the market is, is this tight, then I feel obligated to, to put something on our website, to put content out there, to let them know if you are interested in buying a home in Colorado, this is what you're up against. This is what we suggest you do. In the old days, we used to tell people to bring your checkbook. Okay? That's you still tell one. yeah. Okay. Okay. But number, Write these down. number one is talk to Lonnie or Randy <laughs> or your lender and get pre-approved so you okay. know you can buy what you're looking at. Okay. That's absolutely the first thing. So reach out to a lender first, not a realtor, a lender or a realtor well, that can connect you with a? I'd talk to a realtor because they're gonna have those connections with Lonnie and Randy, okay. uh, who they trust and know, okay. and can, you can place them. Uh, Lonnie has a different demographic of people that he works with, mm -hmm than Randy does. And uh, you have to understand that Randy talks a little bit slow. <laughs> they just have their ears tuned in, okay? Yes, they gotta have their ears tuned in. So when I get somebody from in the South, I'll tell them Randy, is, Randy. is also a veteran and he understands that. Okay, okay. And, okay. and Lonnie does a lot of rental business. Mm -hmm. uh, he loves That's does a lot of the, our audience. A lot of it, they want to come, they want to rent for six to 12 months to decide where they want to buy. So, if, if we can align them with a realtor that can help them get into a rental property and then keep an eye out, you know, a six month lease, and then I mean, that's that's the kind of content that I provide to my audience. Is yeah, and right now, you're hearing a two percent increase in value. And I think before you get too much further into this year, you're going to be looking at six to eight percent increase wow. in value. And on a five hundred thousand dollar house, excuse me, that's going to be twenty five thousand dollars to wait six months. Anybody disagree with that? So, uh, with with your listings, that you would you have virtual tours that you would be able to send them on houses. That they would say, okay, yeah, we haven't seen it, we haven't walked in it, we don't even know, you know, the neighborhood, but we like the house, and, and because of the market's so tight, we want to move on it. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that that relocation that I'm that I feel responsible to relate to my audience. Yeah, we we've done that. I I know uh, Lynn sold a house just online. I have a number of times. Uh, everybody else, raise your hand if you sold a house just online waiting on the inspection. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, so they, don't, they haven't even walked through it. They haven't smelt it. They haven't done anything. They just buy it online. Right. Yep. You're laughing at me. I, you know, I, <laughs> important. Don't do that. It's a, <laughs> okay. This is great stuff, guys. I, 
my my content and my audience is going to really appreciate all of this information. May I, may I just make another comment? The, uh, Candy, you don't want to scare them though. When we moved back from Ohio in 1998, it was a very tight market here in Denver. Yeah, it was. And I was so scared that we couldn't find a house because I, all I heard about was, oh, it's mm -hmm. inventory's low, it's a hot market. And I mean, that was scared to death. And I have to tell you, the realtor that we worked with, um, he wasn't available, so he got some newbie who didn't know from mm -hmm. anything. But it, the stuff that I was shown at the price point that we could afford, first off, we had to spend another 100000 then to get the similar thing than we had in Ohio because of the difference in markets. Yeah. Yeah. And we saw some. We chose the, the best one of the ones that we found, and we jumped on it. But I was nervous going into that, and I would just caution you not to, I mean, yes, they need to get their roller skates on, they need to bring their checkbook, but not scare them and assure them that working with a good professional realtor who's going to put you in contact with a competent lender who's going to get you to the closing table, that you're going to find a house. Just keep reassuring them that if you're working with a professional, that you're going to, you're going to find something that meets your needs okay I'm a, I'm a native here i've lived in the same house for 20 years so we bought our house 20 years ago so i, I haven't been in the real estate game so this is all very helpful i may add to that that i have a fair number of people who come in and want to get pre-approved and they're really reluctant about it because they think they're not going to be able to qualify for anything or they can't qualify for anything that they want to live in. And there is that group of people who are pleasantly surprised with what they can, what they can qualify for. Now, and yeah. the credit check thing, it's going to lower my score. <laughs> How often does that happen, guys, in the, in the mortgage business? You guys do a credit check and the score goes down. I mean, it's not going to go down significantly. It's a fact of life. You got to do it. I had this conversation with somebody yesterday. They were so worried that we were going to pull their credit and their score might go down three points. And I'm going, okay, you've got to make the determination. Do you want to get into the market? Or do you want to sit there and worry about what you can qualify for and just, and then you're going to see the market pass you by. It's going to increase by four to five percent. And then you're going to call me back in about four months and want to kick yourself because you didn't get into the market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. If you want to buy a home, you need your credit pulled. Hey, in addition to uh, some of the things we talked about, Lonnie has a great point. You know, if you have somebody that has a price point of uh, 500,000, you know, have them look at homes that are a little bit lower than that. He suggested 480, you know. So if you do get in a, in a bidding war or you have to, you know, increase over the list, you, st you know that you have that pre-approval, you know. And that's the fantastic thing about a good lender is they're going to help you with, you know, tips and points like that, as well as a good realtor. You got to sometimes think outside the box and be creative to be able to get your clients into a home, you know, so. Well, I have to jump off. It's been a pleasure and you guys have been so helpful. And so if you guys have any questions, please, um, regarding the South Metro Guide, let me know. Okay, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. How are we looking on time, Kevin? Um, we're at 9-11. Um, did you guys have any additional things to add from the uh, STAT committee? One of the things I've noticed with the homes I've been photographing, probably at least half of the people have are moving out of state. Oh. So. Huh. Right. Well, um, we'll go ahead and move forward. Thank you guys, um, SATS committee, for this powerful information today. We do appreciate your time and putting that all together and, and helping us all out.
um, in the manner that you did today. So, um, so since we have a little bit of extra time, uh, our intention today was going to be kind of have an open forum. We've kind of been doing that in a in a roundabout way here at the latter part of our discussion. But um, you know, we have affiliates on, we have realtors on here as well. Um, I have a couple questions for you as affiliates. Um, what have you guys been doing to stay relevant in your business today? And if you could chime in uh, and share that with the group uh, and have some discussion around that, um, that would be fantastic. Um, so, hi, this is Angelica Jones with Guardian Title Agency. And um, basically, uh, as you said earlier, Kevin, the video thing. The video thing is huge. Um, I have uh, put some videos together just thanking clients after they do a closing or when we first get the executed contract. And a lot of times I can't get a hold of people. If I can't get a hold of people, I send them a video. And um, I've been doing a lot of informational stuff, video and Zoom, and it, it's, it's working wonderfully for me, so. Well, thanks, Angelica. Hey, yeah, this is Matt with Mid-State Home Inspections. Uh, as far as myself, I've uh, just been doing a lot of the marketing side of things and, <clears throat> and had a couple inspections this week and is picking up. Uh, I think some of the competitors in the field are, are pretty pretty steady right now. And uh, yeah, just trying to, to market, get my name out there and, and stay busy. Help you guys out as realtors too. I'll chime in now, <laughs> um, if that's okay. Sorry, Karen. Yeah, go ahead, Marie. <laughs> so um, the video is definitely a plus. We're getting to uh, ready to launch. We're, we've owned and operated our business for 35 years. We had a professional gentleman come in and tell our story from when my husband was 13 years old up until present. We're getting ready to put that out there, which is great. And I think that that's a great tool because clients are looking for a seasoned floor covering company with products that hit all price points and all products and installation because they need to get their flooring in and they don't want to deal with five or six different companies to do that. So we're specializing in covering everything from A to Z and the installation as well. Um, we're also advisors. So when I had a client come in yesterday, um, she had brought in samples, she was price matching. I redirected her because she is selling and, and the price point of that home was in the lower range. I educated her on, she really didn't need that thick, heavy piece of carpet, but to put a little bit extra, um, the better pad underneath it, get her price point down and still help her achieve her goals. So that's our specialty is helping those clients understand that you know you can still get that house on the market still have a good product but still educate them in the process so we're just hands-on in front and i'm very grateful thanks yeah, thank you for sharing I'd like, to, I'd like to chime in um in the home warranty business we've been staying relevant uh due to especially a few months ago so many purchases happening sight unseen mm, yeah, so sure. our a warranty world, we're about triple where we were at this time last year. Um, but more importantly, just I, I just want to, if any of you realtors use any warranty company at all, it's really important to understand that what the pandemic has done to us um, with people being home more, water, electric, appliance, systems usage is up about 40%. So we are seeing unprecedented claim volume, not just us, but everybody. We are currently about 30,000 claims over year to date last year. That means there are delays, there are slowdowns. So everybody be patient, no matter who your warranty company is. I, I know everybody's trying their best, but this has really, really thrown the industry for a loop. Uh, so it's always, I, I've been advising my people to reach out to your clients Tell them if they have a warranty to place claims online. They don't have to wait on hold. And always utilize your rep as a customer service agent because they can usually weed through the red tape and offer immediate assistance. And it just, you know, you know how uh, hold times can be frustrating. So I know we're all in the same boat and it's, it's, 
it's a really difficult time for the industry. Yeah, thank you, Karen. It, it, one of the nice things with the warranties, you know, through CTME contracts, you can just set it up right through the through the program. So, you know, and I think sometimes people forget some of the simple things that can be done. So, like, they don't have to be on hold or, or anything right. like. That, so. And at two ten, we we take claims online, so you can place a claim and get a dispatch in in two minutes. Okay. Cool. Anybody else, Angela? there I had to unmute myself so um I've been in the office the whole time you know since like real estate um construction was considered essential so the first couple months I was here alone and so I've pretty much converted over to an office person now because we still don't have most of our staff back they have young children and and are are, are staying home and on unemployment so to stay relevant between answering phones and putting in new inspection requests I've made, I think, another 500 LinkedIn connections with realtors and had conversations back and forth. And then I've called all of my realtors that are my clients and done a lot of these Zoom meetings and constant contact. And I just started with the property blast, so I'll see how that goes. But um, we've been just very appreciative because the realtors to us must be crazy busy because I would say even without hail, we're having a better year than we had last year. So it's been amazing for us and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, Angela, some of the things we talked about were maybe somebody is, you know, buying a home sight unseen, you know, I think people are a little bit more interested uh, in diving a little bit deeper sometimes in the inspection than they have in the past. Even if they've chosen to forego, you know, asking for a lot of items, they want to know what is really going on with the home. So so I'm sure that's part of the reason that you've increased in, in some of your business. So um, Angela, I gotta be honest, every single time you post a photo, I wanna believe you're the one on the roof. So, you know, and I'm like, Angela, she gets up there, she's really working it on those roofs. So <laughs> in my mind, every single time I see one, you're the one taking that photo. So cool. Anybody else? Yes. Carol? Can I, um, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, Ed, Carol you go first. first. Okay. I. I just wanted to thank all the realtors and even some affiliates that have um, given me leads for homes. You know, we're still taking orders out of the home so you can get them ready to sell or people moving in. And I just, again, really do appreciate uh, the association uh, and, and uh, the help that uh, is given. And we are open. We're you know, if it's not, if it's smelling, it's not selling and we're getting rid of those smells. Thank you. Yeah. Ed, I, uh, I uh, quoted your line to a client just the other day. So um, we may be giving you a, a, a call here in the near future. So. All right. Carol. Yes, I um. So I've been doing a lot more in the way of 3D tours, the 3D walkthrough tours. And I think they've really helped some people sell the homes. And even though you might get fewer folks actually going to visit the home, I think you're getting, I think online has become even more important. So the 3D and even video tours, I've been doing some of those as well. I think they're going to be something that we're gonna carry forward. It's gonna save you as buyer's agents a ton of time because your homeowner, your, your potential buyers can really look through the properties and really see what's there before visiting so that they can, they can eliminate a lot of homes. And then the, those who are really interested in the homes are going to be um, attending the uh, in-person you know, showings. So yeah. that's, uh, that's something that I think, I think it's going to carry forward quite a bit. Yeah, I believe so as well, you know. I've said this a couple of times in other meetings, but you know, we've kind of let the genie out of the bottle and you know, how do we put it back? So, um, and I think that's opportunities for us as realtors in the fact that you know, how many more buyers can you work with if we're working in an environment like we have right now where you can leverage technology uh, so that you don't have to go and see every single home. You know, they can eliminate some homes. They may like the pictures, but then they go in and they don't like the configuration or where the staircase is or something like that. So well, and, that, and really that's what there. and that's what the video and the 3D does for you. You you yeah. even see a better relationship of all of that 
and and those those features in a home that somebody's for me it's the kitchen if the kitchen doesn't work the house doesn't work you know so for a lot of people i think those if you don't have to actually physically go there every time to every home i think it's going to save everybody a lot of time and money in the yeah. long run i do agree with you carol so all right well thank you carol so um with that said if the, nobody else has anything uh, i think we'll you know, wrap this up for today. And uh, thank you for all participating. Uh, could uh, share our spot or thank our, uh, our uh, sponsors and pro corporate partners. Do you want to bring that up, Adriana? Or not. But, you know, we always are very appreciative of our sponsors, our corporate sponsors, our individual sponsors on a, uh, on a weekly basis. So thank you for participating today. And you guys have a wonderful uh, Friday. And hopefully you're all doing something fun and exciting over the, uh, over the weekend. So we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, everyone.